for today, mister! Run, Lloyd! Run for your life! Ah! Hey! You ain't garbage! Yes! Superlative! I was worried, Lloyd! Jedediah, we have found the great Zeptaf Passage. Bipeds throughout the ages will note this moment in history. Now, if we only had means of traversing that lake. Ezekiel, look out! Very well then, if it must be our muscle and wits that save us, then so be it. Once again, nature has challenged us, but our manful know-how and the spirit of the true adventurer have persevered. Let future generations be inspired by our triumph. Yeah! All right, all right, quiet down. So that's how Lewis and Quark discovered the Zeptap Passage, allowing many of your ancestors to migrate westward and settle throughout the quadrant. Like they were doing it a favor. Great, there's the bell. Now do me a favor and migrate out of my classroom. I said it before and I'll say it again. That was the coolest school movie ever made. For historical guys, Lewis and Cork were awesome. Climbing mountains, fighting wild animals, and not a powdery wig or pair of satin pants between them. Yes, back in those days, it was mad against the elements. I wish we could do stuff like those guys were doing. Well, maybe we can. I mean, think about it, guys. Why not go out and have an adventure of our own in the great outdoors? What? You mean like go camping? Well, yeah. All we need are a pocket knife, a compass, and plenty of guts. And maybe some string. Nebulon, I like the way you talk. It would be a thrilling opportunity to exercise our hunting and gathering instincts. I imagine dinner will taste oh so savory after I myself have wrestled it to the ground. And I could start a fire using nothing but sticks and some fire. It'll be like getting back to our roots. Just us men against the elements. Uh, only one problem. Before we actually go up against these elements, we kind of got to get to them. Why not ask our fathers to take us? Passing the flashlight down from one generation to the next, as it were. My dad did used to go camping before I was born. I bet he knows some pretty handy stuff. My dad likes rocks. Oh, yeah, I can't Let's wait. Let's do this. Oh, hey, sorry, buddy. Here we are all talking about going with our dads, and we kind of forgot about your dad not being around and all. Hey, don't worry about me. I know somebody I can ask is just as good. Z, one billion and seven. N, cube, four thousand four. Let me get this straight. You want me to give up all this lollygagging around at the home, playing Fringo, snoozing half the day away in my reclinatron, so I can go roughing it with you and your friends out in some forest? Uh, yeah, Grandpa Leo. At least I was hoping that maybe you would. Maybe? Why, of course I would. I always fancy the two of us going off and doing something like that. Yes, sir, my boy, don't you worry a bit. I'll show you how it's done. Fringo! Fringo! Camping, eh? Yeah, Dad, with me and my friends. Hmm. I always fancied you and me heading off to the wilderness together someday. Why, sure, buddy. You really want to know how to rough it out there? You just leave it all to me. An intriguing proposal, Douglas. Truth be told, I have always imagined the two of us heading off on some sort of father-son retreat. Excellent! However, I know nothing at all about camping. Oh. So, I shall research it in great detail. Worry not, son. Once we've entered the great outdoors, your old man will be in complete command of the situation. Thrilling! So, Dad, can you take me? You bet I can! And someday, Kurt, when you've grown tiny and shriveled like me, you can take your son camping, too! Uh, I have a son? Remember, son, lift from the legs, not the neocortex. Spongy beam, son. Never go camping without one. And before you leave, always check your flashlight. Ah! Well, we got all our stuff loaded up. Now it's off to Zoltan 3. Thanks for taking Lloyd, Dad. Heck, I heard a wild septopods couldn't keep me away. I don't get it. You guys pack up all this stuff and go on a long trip just so you can sleep in the dirt? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't really expect you to understand, Francine. You see, this is about us men doing what men do best. Beasting the elements, conquering mountains, chopping down trees. Going potty in a hole? That doesn't sound like much fun to me. Oh, now, Francine, I'm sure it'll be wonderful. Gentlemen, 
Let's hit the trail. A million vials of gluck on the road, a million vials of gluck. If one of those vials should suddenly implode, it's going to be a disaster, isn't it? One more time! Nah. Man, Zoltan 3 is the coolest camping planet ever! An entire world of pure wilderness, woods, lakes, fishing, and whoa! Mount Neutrino! The tallest mountain in the system! We shall master it! We'll be just like Lewis and Quark! Hey, Dad, how much longer do we get there? Well, son, I reckon if traffic stays this light, then it'll be, oh, probably another couple of hours. Two whole hours? Ah, oh, no. Two hours? Not if you take the shortcut. Shortcut? Yep. If memory serves me right, all you gotta do is turn left up at the Crab's Head Nebula. I don't know, Leo. I think maybe we should just stick to the map. Hogwash! In my day, we didn't even have no fancy 3D maps. Fella had to use his intuition. That's half of what roughing it's all about. You just leave the navigating up to old Grandpa Leo, and I'll get us there in an hour flat. One more hour! One more hour! One Go on, Frank. Don't let the boys down. Hour. Hang a left One up here. Well, for the boys. Yay! Seems like it's taken forever to get to Zoltan 3. Yes, Kurt. Unfortunately, the act of anticipation can have the effect of slowing time down in your mind. Simply find something else to occupy your thoughts, and before you know it, you'll have arrived. Or, son, you could try what I always do. What, pray tell, would that be? Just start asking if we're there yet. Are we there yet? Of course not. Oh. Are we there yet? No. Oh. Are we there yet? No. Oh. Are we there yet? No! There we go, right about where I figured it'd be. Good old Zoltan 3. Are we there yet? Yes, all right? We're there. Thank goodness we are finally there. <laughs> Check it out! This is even cooler than they describe it in the brochure. Like I always say, they don't got words to describe all the magnificent junk in nature. Whoa! What is that thing? It's a mountain, Kurt. Mount Neutrino, no doubt. Let's climb it! Yeah! Right. Whoa, wait just a second, fellas. First, we gotta set up camp. Now, Eddie, pay attention. Yes, you too, Douglas. Watch closely while I direct the construction of our tent. What I was about to say, Eddie, was the best place to put up a tent would be right about... Here. Actually, Douglas, careful research has taught me that a preferable spot would be over here. What are you doing, Walter? I'm teaching my boy the proper way to pitch a tent, if you don't mind. Maybe the proper wrong way. Watch and learn, boys, as I show old Professor McNoggin the proper right way to pitch a tent. Reading about it in books will only get you so far, after all. It'll get me far enough, Horton. Now, give me that tent. No! You, no. You, you, don't, don't Am I seeing stuff, or are our dads actually fighting over who gets to set up a tent? All right, fellas, while they get camp set up, we need to start cooking supper. Now we're talking, because to cook supper, we'll need a big old you-know-what. Mom? No, we gotta build ourselves a fire. Now this, Lloyd, is an axe. Sweet! Can I chop up some wood? Hold on there, boy. Chopping up trees is dangerous work. Just sit back and watch your Grandpa Leo do his thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, now we're chopping wood. Ah, <laughs> uh, this is gonna take forever. Oh yeah, tough guy. Well, you think you could do better? You go right ahead. Hey, I'm pretty strong. Do you think maybe I could try? No, son. You sit down. <laughs> this is something I've always dreamed of teaching you how to do. <laughs> well, Eddie, there you have it. The Camp Master Elite Series 2000 Wilderness Domicile. Fully assembled and ready for service. Hey, good job, guys. Yes, bravo! Yep, that's the power of educated guesswork for you, seeing as how Professor McNoggin here kept hogging the instructions. I would have gladly read them to you had you been willing to share your pegs. What are you talking about? You had enough pegs? I had nothing of the sort. In fact, I had to improvise on my side by doubling the tension on another peg. Oh, no. Don't tell me you... Oh! Ah! cares about tents anyway. Real men sleep under the stars, and I know the perfect spot. Right, right over, over there. there. Um, perhaps we should see about dinner. 
Boy, this is the life. Who needs wood when you can roast weenies over a portable energy orb? I don't know, Grandpa. I was kind of looking forward to starting a campfire with two sticks. Yeah, me too. Oh, come on. That's not what camping's all about. Camping's about rolling with the changes. It's about improvising. And... It's about getting scared out of your wits telling ghost stories in the dead of night. Oh, oh, so so now you're talking. And I know just the story. Heard it when I was a kid. What's it called, Eddie's dad? It's called Bloody Tentacles. Bloody Tentacles! <laughs> Bloody tentacles. Actually, I'm quite familiar with that tale. Me too. It scares me. Heck, I'm more than familiar with it. Why, me and my friends practically invented that story back in the day. That's right. It all happened a long time ago. Right here on Zoltan 3, as a matter of fact. Four teenage boys, just about your age, went camping in the clearing. Just like this one, by golly. Completely ignoring all the warnings. <laughs> Warnings? That's right, warnings. That just over that hill over there was a maximum security prison where the most dangerous, cold-blooded criminals from all around the galaxy were locked up. Well, those boys stayed up late into the night telling stories and singing songs. Then round about midnight, they put out their campfire, climbed into their sleeping bags, and went to sleep. No one knows how long they slept or even what time it was. When it came, quiet at first, but then slowly, a thump and a slither. A thump. Slither, moving through the bushes toward the camp. Thump, slither, thump, slither, getting louder and louder until... <clears throat> Excuse me, but I believe it was a thump and a rustle, not a thump and a slither. Thump, rustle, thump, rustle. And point of fact, it wasn't a maximum security prison on the other side of the hill, but an impound yard for criminally defective robots. Nah, you both got it wrong. It was a pirate cave, and what that kid heard was... Uh, uh, uh. None of that thumping or rustling or slithering nonsense. And where's the part where the funny-talking cat tricks the king out of all of his gold? There's no talking cat. It's a horror story. Well, you never know it from the way you were telling it. Oh, yeah? Well, you, well, you, know, know, you, know, you know something, guys? I'm starting to get the feeling that if Lewis and Quark took their dads with them, they never would have discovered anything. Except perhaps the true meaning of bitter disappointment. Is this ever going to get fun? I don't know. Let's wait and see. Maybe tomorrow will be the start of a whole new adventure. It's daytime. How about if we go hiking? Yeah, and maybe we can do some fishing or something. I know, Father. Let's all climb Mount Neutrino. Yeah! Sounds like an interesting notion, boys. But first things first, no camper in his right mind goes out to face the elements without a good old-fashioned breakfast. That's okay, Dad. We can eat some freeze-dried food bars. Yeah, we just want to go out and have some fun. Trust me, Lloyd, there's nothing funner than making your own fancy flapjack breakfast out in the wilderness. Purportedly, no camp-out experience would be complete without it. But that means you have to stir up that energy orb again, and mix the pancake mix, and cook the pancakes, and eat them. Then it's time to clean up. Nothing like scouring a blackened pot with nothing but cold water and a handful of gravel. Sounds great. I'm gonna start up that orb. I believe I should start the orb. Uh, excuse me, but what are we supposed to do? You don't need to do anything, Lloyd. Just leave it to your Grandpa Leo. Before you know it, you'll be eating the best breakfast you ever had. Now I say I should mix the batter. If you mix the batter, it's gonna be lumpy. Lumpy? I'll show you lumpy. Oh, well, no, we're, 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 we're never gonna have any fun. I think it's time we did. What do you mean? We came out here for adventure. I say we climb Mount Neutrino on our own. But our dads told us to wait. Are you kidding? Just look. They'll never even know we're going. Now this is camping. Hiking through nature, chucking rocks, climbing over logs. And big old Mount Neutrino right in front of us. I think if we rest here, I refill my canteen in nature's faucet, and then we go conquer that bad old girl. I'm gonna go swimming. You do that, big fella. There's nothing refreshes an adventuring man like a pool of fresh, clear... Huh? Kurt, no! Is it cold? No, look! <sighs> My goodness, that's no pool of water. It's a pool of acid! Oh, man, now it's gonna rain. <sighs> it's a meteor shower! Run! Okay? 
I believe so, uh, I guess. Uh, that must have been an earthquake. Great. Earthquakes, meteor showers, deadly pools of acid. Lloyd, when we get back to the campsite, remind me to tell your grandpa he's got lousy taste in vacation spots. Er, actually, Eddie, I'm not sure you're going to be able to do that. Why not? I'm afraid that fellow might have other plans for us. <laughs> Maybe we can talk to him and he'll let us go? Are you jesting? That's a vicious creature up there! Yeah! See all them spikes and teeth? That dude's built for jumping, not chatting! You know something, fellas? I could swear just a second ago I heard some big, giant creature screeching somewhere in the forest. Nah, that wasn't no screeching critter! That was an earthquake! I felt the ground trembling! Maybe the ground was trembling because of all them fiery rocks I saw falling from a cloud over there! Falling rocks? Nah, it was an earthquake! It was a big, loud creature! Yeah, you don't know what you're talking about! Gentlemen! 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 Please, let's not be ridiculous. Now, I've read the literature on Zoltan 3, and there's no mention at all of earthquakes, fiery rock showers, or... <laughs> an enormous hairy spider! Uh, now that I think about it, uh, maybe we should have taken a right back by the Crab's Head Nebula, not a left. You deviated from the standard route to Zoltan 3? Ah! Oh my goodness, we're not on Zoltan 3 at all! So we're not there yet? No, we're on Fangor Dark, planet of danger! It couldn't be! I'd never get us lost! But, uh, just in case I did, uh, don't tell Lloyd, okay? I've been trying real hard to make a good impression. You've been trying to make a good impression? All you've done is ruin my chance to make a good impression! You should talk, McNoggin. This was supposed to be the perfect chance for me to show my boy how to camp. I had it all planned out. Yeah, well, if your plan was to ruin my plan, then it worked just great. Your plan? Your plan didn't even exist! Well, well, just your Goodness, fellows, we're certainly in a fix this time. I wish Lewis and Quark were here. Yeah, those guys would pick up a rock and a stick and bust into action. Well, Eddie, then maybe that's just what we gotta do. Lloyd, are you insane? Look at that creature. What about him? So he looks scary. So what? There's only one of him, and there's four of us. You saw what Lewis and Quark did to that monster on the mountaintop. How'd they do it? By doing what men do best. Facing the elements, conquering mountains, taking on whatever dangers come their way. Nature is no match for us men, so I say we fight that creature. Who's with me? I'm with you, man. We shall persevere! That creature's geography! That's history, Kurt. He's history. Let's take him down. like a good idea at the time. I'm scared, Lloyd. Where's he taking us? Back to his lair to eat us! You annoy me! Hey, he talks! Of course I do! Puny creatures, I give you back this feeble vermin I take to be your offspring. Eddie, boys, what's going on? Where have you been? They have been attacking me, Lothak of Fangor Dahl. And this after I tried to rescue them from a crevice. You were trying to help us? We thought you were going to eat us. Huh. Fancy yourself a tasty morsel, do you? Well, fear not. I am a vegetarian. Hey, you should have said something. Said something? What would have been the point? You do not belong to a culture which listens. Well, believe me, Lothak. I shall be giving Douglas a firm talking to about you. You! For two days now, I have heard your shrill voices shouting and bickering from across the wooded plain. What manner of men argue amongst themselves, leaving their young to wander off and hatch such stupid plans? Uh, well, we're just regular folk, you know. We just figured we'd treat the boys to a nice father-son weekend. You have traveled far from your own planet, yet gained little closeness with your sons. Perhaps if you desire closeness, you should try paying attention to them! And in the meantime, stay away from the mountain! Your presence disturbs my son! <laughs> Oh, it is all right, Blackman. The foolish aliens will soon be on their way. Come, let us linger on the mountain perch and watch the sun set over the craters of the Death Moon. Oh, jeez. <laughs>
I feel like a darn fool. Yes, all this time we've been so focused on having this outing turn out exactly as we thought it should, we never even realized it was turning into a disaster. Guess we really let you boys down. That's yeah, one way to put it, I certainly suppose. did. Ah, uh, well, we should probably head home. Wait a minute! We are not ready to go yet! But the campout's ruined. Not necessarily. How do you figure? We got two whole hours left, and I say, why waste them? I mean, here I am, in the great outdoors with my best friends, their dads, and my grandpa. And I figure we could do at least one cool thing together before we go. Look, Lloyd, we're on Fangor Dar, planet of danger. There's nothing here but misery. What sort of cool thing do you figure we could possibly do in a place like this? Don't you guys ever listen? Ready, men? Ready! Ready. Good, because here it comes. Now that is a sunset. Yeah. Here's the... Have a smile. No. <laughs>